fixed interest kind of a security is a fixed income security where we see that uh, the cash flows are like you invest there is a cash outflow today on the day of uh, purchase of the bond and on a regular basis the bond would be uh, paying some coupons and uh, on maturity there is uh, a redemption price that is being paid right this is what are the typical cash flows that happen in a bond initially when you are purchasing a bond there is a cash outflow on a regular basis there are cash inflows probably semi annual or annual kind of basis there are cash inflows which are called as coupons which are decided at the time of uh, which are mentioned as a part of the prospectus itself means which are decided at the time of purchase of the bond itself and finally there is a maturity period associated with the bond and on maturity there is a lump sum redemption value that is being uh, that is being uh, given that is uh, that is the cash inflow part so a typical value see if i have to find out what is an appropriate uh, price for this particular bond all we can look at is the present value of the future cash flows and in a general in a bond the cash, the future cash flows are all the coupons in general they may be level coupons equal for the entire period and uh, uh, there is another cash flow which is the redemption value which occurs on the maturity date so the typical price of a very plain vanilla bond price is nothing but the present value of all the coupons so if uh, c is uh, the coupon per year we can talk about it as annual payment i mean if c is a coupon per year for n number of years the present value of that c for n number of years i can take it as uh, an but at the same time depends on how frequently is this c paid if c is paid on an annual basis yes this is the formula but if c is annual but the payment is happening semi annual means what could happen is every half year i may get c by 2 so c is <coughs> computed on an annual rate but the payment is done at uh, a quarter or uh, generally on a semi annual kind of a model if that is the case the present value of all the coupons will become uh, uh, can on a half yearly kind of a payment basis so that's the way a typical uh, coupons if there are any other frequencies coming up so in general i'll write it as ap wherein uh, p denotes uh, the frequency at which uh, the payments of the coupons happen during a year and uh, this and then there is a redemption value which is r and this r is paid at the end of n periods so i can discount it to the present value by taking r v to the power of n so what we see is if it is a very plain bond without too much of uh, variations in it the typical way i can compute the price of the bond is simply all the coupons you find out the present value of them using an uh, probably on a pithily uh, convertible kind of a basis plus the redemption value you take the present value of it by uh, multiplying it with v to the power of n so that's a straight forward kind of a cal cal calculation but of course here we make an assumption that no taxes this formula is applicable only when there are no taxes on the coupons as well as on the redemption value so which is slightly far from reality but only under that assumption 
you can apply this formula. So when there is a, a tax, generally on this coupons, we pay what is called as income tax. And on this uh, capital redemption price, we pay what is called as a capital gain tax. Now, by uh, in this plain form, we are assuming that neither the capital gain tax nor the income tax is applicable for the bond. So now, if I want to take, if I know that, yeah, there is an income tax, but no capital gain tax, or there are both income taxes and the capital gain taxes. See, when I purchase this <coughs> at P, and when I am selling it at R, R minus P is what is my capital gain. Right, when the purchase price is P, but the redemption price is R, the R minus P is what is the capital gain. And I have to pay a tax on this capital gain. That kind of a tax is what I call as capital gain tax. But if R minus P is negative, means it's like a capital loss for me. So I don't need to pay any kind of capital gain tax. Or even if both of them are equal also, no need to pay any kind of capital gain tax. So typically, uh, if the capital gain uh, tax is involved, the pricing could be different. We have taken a few numericals to describe or to understand that concept quite comfortably. But one point is the income tax is generally levied on the coupons and the capital gain tax is levied on the difference between your redemption price and the purchase price of the bond. Now, one interesting thing in this uh, context to understand is a simple test whether capital gains exist or not. A simple test whether the capital gains exist or not. From an investor standpoint, look at first compute IP. The interest rate, the nominal rate of interest convertible P3. Straightforward mechanism. Nominal interest convertible P3. You find out this IP. So the P3 comes into picture from the coupon payment period. If the coupon is paid semi-annual, you take it as I2. If the coupon is paid quarterly, you take I4. <coughs> Test it out with 1 minus T1 multiplied by G. G actually is called as the redemption yield G is typically called as your redemption yield where you take it as coupon divided by the redemption price. Coupon divided by the redemption price. So, just so take the G, you know the coupon value for the bond, you know the redemption price for the bond. Multiply it with 1 minus T, which is uh, nothing but the post tax. And let this tax be the income tax. So post the income tax. Post the income tax. You multiply this with uh, the coupon by redemption price. And in case you see that IP is greater than 1 minus T into G, we will say that capital